across the area are making a new investment to stop kids from getting sick. A new device aims to clean classrooms in a way that other methods don't and also prevent the spread of germs. WCIA3's Emily Braun is live in Rantoul this morning. Emily, what is this device? Christy, it's called an electrostatic sprayer, or e-sprayer for short, and it's challenging the way we traditionally think about cleaning. And the developers say that the idea is contagious in a good way. You'll see what I mean here. Rantoul's Ader Junior High School is just the latest to get this device, and they got it through a grant. Champaign, Tuscola, Monticello, and Muhammad schools also started using this. Staff told me they want to take a proactive approach to fighting against germs so more kids and teachers can stay in school and not be at as high of a risk of catching things like the flu or norovirus. The developers say it will save custodians time and increase their efficiency. Now, coming up at 7 o'clock, when we make the switch to WCIX, hear how this device works and why the developers say it is a more effective way to clean classrooms and keep kids germ free. Live in Rantoul, Emily Braun, WCI3, your local news leader. I think this might be the last morning here of the week that the kiddos and you are going to have to get out into this bitterly cold air mass. We expect conditions to warm up as we head into the next few mornings, and we're going to see eventually some snow moving in. I think tomorrow, though, uh, we get to hold off the snow until the latter part of the morning. But this morning, sunny skies to go along with the frigid air. We'll, talk, we'll start off right around those lower teens and upper single digits, eventually getting closer to that 30-degree mark by the afternoon with a few more of those clouds ahead of our system that does bring us the snow, uh, which will be into the day for tomorrow. But your roofing dog on at Addis Memorial Sky Cam here looking really sunny, a beautiful sunrise. Still, we have that snowpack on the ground, and that's going to help to keep things on the colder side here this afternoon. Uh, we see a lot of sunshine really ahead with high pressure, but high pressure will also move out of here as we head on into the evening along with that Arctic air mass. And by then, we expect to see a lot more clouds. The clouds will help us to, from dropping as much as we head on into the night. Into your day tomorrow, snow will start to fly, and that looks to be around here throughout the day tomorrow and on into late tomorrow evening and into the first part of tomorrow night. Your highs today are going to be pretty similar to tomorrow, too, with highs reaching the upper 20s and the lower 30s. But by the end of the week, Friday and Saturday, we see those temperatures warm up quite a bit, and it's going to be a good improvement from where we are here right now, and we look to keep those highs pretty close to average into the earlier part of next work week. We'll let you know what that looks like in your seven-day forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Aaron, Christy. Thanks, Adam. A hearing in Springfield focused on the death of a toddler in Decatur. Two-year-old Tanasia Barnes was found dead last month. The girl's mother, Tawanka Davis, is charged with murder along with Davis's boyfriend, Anthony Myers. The toddler had been discharged from the care of DCFS. Yesterday afternoon, state lawmakers raised questions about the role of the state's child welfare agency in her death, focusing on a call to DCFS's hotline in November. The caller said Tanasia Barnes' mother was neglecting her daughter's health care. The interim director of DCFS said that alone was not grounds for a new investigation at the home. The toddler's father says he plans to sue the state, and he wanted people to be at the hearing who were in charge of his daughter's case. I'm not trying to be rude, but we don't need a, a, a somebody just that been here three months versus almost two years. Like you just coming in the picture. So with that being said, like I don't think I should be like hearing anything from her, like because I don't like really. I have never seen you before. I don't know what you know, what they caught up, caught you on. I don't trust none of them. Governor Prisker wrote a letter to the committee reinforcing his support for new funding for the agency. He also invited the oversight of the committee to help reduce caseloads on the workers and add new computer systems. A three-year-old was found wandering around in Decatur while the person that was supposed to be taking care of him was at home. Police say it happened around 2 a.m. near Wood and Monroe Streets on Saturday. A stranger found the child in the cold without an adult. Christopher Scott came to the rescue, came to the scene rather, and told police he was supposed to be caring for the child. Police say he had been drinking. Scott was arrested for endangering the life and health of a child. We have an update for you this morning. Police have found a missing man from the Rantoul area. Several agencies spent hours trying to find Melvin Fox, who was last seen in the South Point area. Late last night, state police found him walking in a field near Route 45 in rural Rantoul. Officers say he is in stable condition, but he was taken to the hospital as a precaution.
A third person has been arrested for a shooting that happened last year in Champaign. The Champaign County Street Crimes Task Force and U.S. Marshals arrested 26-year-old Dante Pickens yesterday. Police say he was involved in a shooting that happened on Hickory and Vine Streets in November. A woman was taken to the hospital. and Police say the car she was in was shot at by another car leaving the American Legion. Public health officials will be reaching out to people who may have had contact with an inmate in Champaign County who tested positive for tuberculosis. Inmates at the satellite jail in Urbana told staff last month someone had been coughing blood for a month or two. The inmate was originally sent to the hospital with suspected pneumonia. That turned out to be TB. Inmates are tested for TB when they're booked into the jail. This inmate did not test positive in October. Medical staff did a second TB test on more than 100 inmates over the past few days. New this morning, a Decatur road was partially blocked after a crash yesterday morning. Our partners at the Herald and Review report two vehicles collided at 22nd Street and Pershing Road. It's not known if anyone was hurt in that crash. A traffic light was knocked to the ground. Officers say they will have more information about this today. People in a Champaign neighborhood have had flooding problems for years, and now the city is doing something about it. Council members approved tearing down 46 homes in Garden Hills. Some of them have had water pool into their yards. Others have had flooding in the houses. The city sent out notices back in October, letting people and property owners know about the plans. Public Works officials say they have experience helping people move. If the relocation thing uh, is uncertain, you know, we recently did that uh, over in the Bristol neighborhood where we helped relocate people uh, in order to, to do the Bristol, um, Bristol Place redevelopment. So we do have experience doing that. The city set aside $5 million to help relocate tenants. New this morning, candidates running for the Champaign School Board will have a chance to interact with the community during a forum tonight. It'll be from 6.30 to 8.30 at the Champaign Public Library. Candidates will answer questions from the audience about issues in the education system. Well, that will wrap up the morning show on WCIA 3, but coming up when we make the switch to WCIX for the 7 and 8 o'clock hours of the morning show. We're giving back today. Find out how you can get involved in the Parkland Day of Giving coming up in about 10 minutes. But before we switch over to the X, let's get a check of our seven-day forecast with Adam. So we're going to see the sunshine back again. None of those flurries here this afternoon, but uh, not just flurries. Snow showers actually are showers making their way through. Heading into Thursday, this is going to bring accumulating snowfall. We'll see rain and storms heading into Saturday and then dry as we head on into the beginning part of next week.